Hello and welcome to this how-to guide on the 3D visualizer and collision detection. In previous videos we've used the 3D simulation to create custom mechanics and script animations. Today we'll be taking a more in-depth look at the 3D visualizer and how it can be used to set up simulations for projects. We will also dabble with some scripting to detect collisions and make our project react accordingly. Now let's get started with a new project. First, create a project with an application manager. Here I'm using Sysmex Studio version 1.49 and creating a version 5 application manager. The 3D visualizer can be opened from the view menu and by default it will dock in the right hand pane. This can be changed either by dragging the window to another pane or by undocking it from the menu. Objects in the scene are shown under the 3D visualization folder of the configurations and setup section in the MultiView Explorer. If we right click on this folder, we can add various types of objects to the scene. Let's just add a box primitive for now, so we have something to work with. You can see that the box has been added to the folder and appears in the visualizer. At the top of the window, you will see a set of tools that can be used to interact with the visualizer view. Starting on the left, we have the option to split the view, either vertically, horizontally, or into a four-way grid. Next is the selection tool, which allows us to select objects in our scene. We can pan the view using the translate tool. And orbit around our focal point using the rotate tool. Rotate has a couple of options selected using the drop down arrow. Turntable keeps the view aligned with the world plane, so Z is always up in our view, whereas Tumble allows us to rotate around all three axes. We can also rotate at any time by holding down the right mouse button and moving the mouse. In the lower right of the visualizer is the orientation cube. This shows the X, Y and Z axes in red, green and blue respectively, as well as having labels for the front, back, left, right and up and down. You can click on any face, edge or corner to align the view with that face, edge or corner. Holding the control key and pressing one through eight keys will move the view to one of those presets. The view can be zoomed in steps using the mouse scroll wheel. But by selecting the zoom tool and left click dragging, the view can be zoomed smoothly. The scroll wheel zoom will also zoom around the mouse cursor, whereas the zoom tool preserves the focal point of the view. These four tools, Select, Pan, Rotate and Zoom, can be quickly selected using the Q, W, E and R keys on your keyboard. The Projection tool will switch between Perspective View and Isometric. The Scene Graph allows us to set the visibility and collision properties of objects in the scene. More on this later. The ruler tool allows us to measure the distance between two points by setting the start and end points. The distance can be read off by hovering over the tool. The snapping tool allows us to enable or disable snapping and choose whether we use corner snapping 
or face snapping using the drop down. Finally, there is the ability to create recordings of the simulation by clicking on the record button to begin and end recording, after which you will be prompted to save the recording. When an object is selected, we will also be given tool options at the bottom of the screen. Edit will open the objects editor, giving us a dedicated view on the object and some more options for editing. Direct Position Edit will open an edit toolbar that allows us to enter values for position, rotation and scale. For the position and rotation, there's also the option to switch between object coordinates and world coordinates. This will be useful later, particularly if we have parented objects. Edit Workspace Position will give us a translation tool. Edit Workspace Position will give us a translation tool with arrows for single axis movement, squares for movement on a plane, and a spot in the middle for movement in all three axes. Control Z will undo this movement. Edit Workspace Orientation gives us three rings. These will rotate around a single axis each. Finally, show hide mount points will toggle the visibility of the markers for the mount points defined for the object. The editor for this can be seen in the object editor on the left. If we take a look at the object editor, we will see it offers the same options for editing that we have in the visualizer, but with a few extra options. We can toggle the visibility, which is useful if we want to create instances from other code without the original object appearing, or to make an invisible collision box. We can add a collision program, which will be triggered if another object collides with this one in the simulation. Again, we will look at collision later. There is also an option to change the colour, so let's do that now and make things less grey. We can also set the opacity of the object using this dial control. Let's give ourselves a slightly see-through cube. The DX, DY and DZ values are the bounding box sizes of this object, same as the scale values in the visualizer. Offset from parent is the transform of the object, so this equates to the translate and rotate values we looked at before. We can select a parent for the object, and then the offset above will be relative to this parent object. The rotation offset will change the point about which the object will rotate. For example, if the object is connected to a parent by a hinge joint, we could set the rotation offset to align with this hinge joint, so when we rotate it, it remains correctly aligned with the parent. By default, this is the origin, which will be the centre of the object's base. Lastly, we can toggle the visibility of the object's collision hull. Also known as a collision model, or hit marks, this is a 3D mesh that surrounds the entire object. It defines the extents of the object and is used to test when a collision has occurred in a process called collision detection. The options shown in the editor are specific to the object we are editing. For example, if we create a cylinder, instead of a dx, y and z, we get a height and a radius. Most of the rest of the properties are the same though. If we were to import CAD data, we would have a different set of properties. So let's do that now. Right click in the 3D visualization folder again, and this time choose CAD data. We will be importing from a file, so select that and click on the next button. We need to click here to browse 
and I'm going to select one of the parts of the TM12 that was used in the previous uh, video on the custom mechanics. You will see there's a preview of the part with the same controls as we discussed before. On the right is the hierarchical tree of the items contained in the file, with the option to exclude parts. For now, let's not exclude anything and just import the entire object. When we open the editor for this CAD data, we see there is no size options, and the scale tool in the visualizer is gone. We have the same parenting, offset from parent, rotation offset, but we also have an offset from CAD origin. This is useful if the CAD model was not placed at origin in the file or needs rotating to align with something in the simulation. We can also assign it a category and give it some descriptive text. These are used by the CAD library in order to distinguish the items that we've imported. In the collision settings, as well as toggling visibility, we can also configure the hull. Clicking the ellipsis button will open the collision hull configuration window. We can choose whether to limit the hull to being convex and whether to create multiple holes. These will trade off accuracy of collision against complexity of processing. For most tasks, simpler holes will be fine. We can also set up how the geometry is decomposed into the hull by selecting a pre-configured setting or creating custom settings. On the right, we can see the hull that is being generated by these settings. Try changing some of the settings to see how it affects the number of triangles in the mesh and how accurate it fits the CAD data. OK, back to the 3D visualizer. Let's create a physics simulation using the items we've created and ported and introduce some collision detection. Let's make a scene that has the CAD part fall onto a platform and reacts by moving the cylinder. I'll take the box we created at the start and resize it. That way we can make a platform instead of a cubic box. That looks pretty good to me. Let's have the collision cause the cylinder we created to increase in height as if it's a piston head rising up. So let's position the cylinder off to one side and give it a more visible color. It's currently inside the box, so let's hide the box before we move the cylinder. We enable the box and we want to position the CAD object directly over the box. So if we click on our little view box down here, that'll align us directly overhead. We can select the CAD object and let's just line it up over the top. And we'll recolor the cylinder. Let's make that a nice green color. In order for the CAD object to fall and collide with the platform, we need to configure their collision filter settings. To do this, we open the scene graph editor, open the collision settings tab, and configure our collision groups. If we add both the box and the CAD part to the same group, they will not collide. This allows us to test collision between objects made of several parts, without triggering when they collide with other parts of themselves. So we create two groups, add the box to one, and the CAD part to the other. We want the CAD part to be affected by gravity, so check the physics box for it and click Accept. Notice how the part falls onto the box without clipping through it, and that they are both shaded darker to show they have collided. That's the first part done. Now, let's use a little scripting to get the cylinder to react. Under Programming, 
add a new C-sharp program and open it in the editor. Main is a special function that serves as an entry point to the script. We could interact with a cylinder from here, but perhaps there are other interactions that could affect an object and we'd like to handle them from a shape script that is running our simulation. Well, that's no problem. We can do this using a variable. Add a variable, in this case numeric is fine, and give it a relevant name. Now, simply drag the variable onto your script, and SysMac will automatically add the code to get the variable from the name service. We give the variable a new value here by setting its current value property. And that's our collision script finished. To cause this script to fire when something collides with our box, open it in the object editor, then open the collision program, browse for our program and select it. Save the changes. Now when we open the scene graph and reset the position of our CAD data, we see the collision and the value of our variable has been assigned. Now let's reset that value to zero here. Save that. And add a shape script to react to the signal. Right click on the 3D visualization folder again and add a shape script. If you are new to scripting in SysMac, it might be worth watching the how to video on shape script, but for this demo, we will only need a few simple lines of code. Scroll down to the render method. This will be called each time the simulation updates, allowing us to react to changes. We can remove the default code here and once again drag our variable onto the code editor directly. We want to check if our variable's current value is equal to 1. If the value is equal to 1, Whatever code is inside the brackets will be executed, otherwise it will be skipped on each render cycle. In the same way we can drag variables, we can also drag objects into the code editor. Just select the cylinder from the explorer and drop it into our block. To make the cylinder taller, we just need to set its height property. And let's say 1000. Remember, values are entered in millimeters, so small values will be hard to see. And with that, our script is done. We can save it and hit compile. Add a shape script sequence, open it, and select our shape script. Now click execute button. To get it running. When we open the scene graph and reset the position, we can see the code reacting by extending the cylinder. This is only a simple example, but can be extended to perform all sorts of actions when a collision occurs. I encourage you to try this out using the files provided with this video. With that, we've come to the end of another how to video. Hopefully you've learned a few new tips and tricks on creating objects, working with them in the 3D visualizer, and scripting them to react to collisions. Remember to check out the zip files or resources that accompany this video, and try making a project of your own. I'd love to see any crazy simulation ideas you come up with. But for now, thank you for watching, and goodbye.